you have not centered. Jeffrey, ready for more dinos? I'm wearing my stitch shirt. I just wanted to show everyone. Doolin gave this shirt to me. And Stitch isn't a dino, but he is an alien. That's not the same thing. Okay, ready? I'm giving you support. I was at support. I didn't want you to feel alone. Okay. Uh-oh, a hair. Uh-oh, I peeled. Now are you ready? Yeah. Perfect. You can see? Yep. Clear as day. Nice. And welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about Brilliant. and Brilliant. dinosaurs. Rawr! Dino Week continues. There's a hair on my face now. I think it's the one that came from your glasses. And in today's video, my friends, our friends, we are talking about a little comparison between oh. Dinosaur Island, Dulosaur Island, Dinosaur Island, Rar and Right, and Dinosaur world. We're going to give you our thoughts on those four games and ultimately tell you maybe which one might be for you. Maybe they're all for you because you're dino obsessed. We own all of them except for Dulosaur Island. Wait, eye boogie. I get it. Yeah, but you put it on top of your eye. Well, I guess you guys won't be able to see that anyway. But let's start off by talking about the OG game, shall we? Dinosaur Island. Dinosaur Island. Mm -hmm. Now, when this game came out, boy, was I excited. Number one, I love dinosaurs. Number two, they're on an island. That's kind of cool. It also had very uh, 80s. 70s. 80s. 80s. It's the neon vibes, Jeff. It's the 80s. When we were born. What? That was a very Oscar. Well, actually, it was made in the 80s. Yeah. Just like me. Very colorful, you know, not typical board game color either. This game came out and everybody was so, so excited. And the game has dino meeples. The one thing about the original game that I will say is that it only has one kind of dino meeple. I'm pretty sure you could get upgrade packs, yep. but give me different dino meeples. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure you can get them now. I can't remember what the dinosaur was. I think it was a was. long neck. I think it was too. Yeah, they were pink, so that gets it a bonus point. In Dinosaur Island, you are building out a dino park, and you're doing that on your personal player map, and you're going to be purchasing different parts of your park, basically. So there's merchandise shops, there's pens. They're not called pens. What are they called? Packs. Paddocks. They're called paddocks that you could put dinosaurs in, and you're also building out dinosaurs or creating dinosaurs by collecting different types of DNA, mm -hmm. putting it together, in different combinations to get a dinosaur to put into your park, which then increases your danger. So you have to make sure that you're increasing your security to make sure that your guests don't get eaten. You're also hiring specialists that are going to help you do different things, like maybe even clean up after the dinosaurs yeah, or do like, some research. Like breaks the game rules a little bit. Then a part of this game is you're inviting guests into your park. So you've got like a bag full of yellow and pink meeples. You're pulling them out and if it's a yellow meeple yay regular guests and guess what and if it's a pink you. one and they'll pay you to go into the park and if it's a pink one they're they robbers in. they, they snuck in they they're snuck not in. robbers they're bad they eggs is yeah. what they are they're sneaking in and you know they're the ones that are picking on the dinosaurs and breaking them out of their cages and not paying you they're not paying you but then you have to check your security and if your security is not high enough some of your guests are going to get eaten mm. Mm. and guess what the sneaky ones get eaten last yeah. It's the good people getting eaten. That's pretty much how life usually works as mm -hmm. well. There's also objectives with, within the game that you have to try and reach. Mm -hmm. And that's basically the game. This is a huge sprawling game that takes up a nice big chunk of your table. It's not a heavy game in terms of if there's a difficulty. Lot, there's a lot going on in it. There's a so, lot going on. Yes. I don't like saying once you know it, you're good because that's the case for anything. Mm -hmm. But I think once you get to know it, it's very, very straightforward. Yeah. Roll some dice, pick some action selection stuff, build some dinos, you know. Have fun, yeah. really. And the dice are chonky. We loved this game. We loved this when game. When uh, we first played it. Oh it's, my gosh. I think it was on both of our top tens yeah, the first time it's we did got, it. It's got some really good nostalgia for me. It really does. Like this is kind of when we were really getting into the hobby and we saw this game and I was like, oh, this is so unique. It's so different than anything I've ever seen before. I love dinosaurs. I love Jurassic Park. It definitely fit the bill and we, we've loved every play of this. Mm -hmm. Then Pandasaurus came out with 
a two-player version mm -hmm. called Dulasaur Island. Now, we never actually ended up buying this game. Dulasaur Island shrinks Dinosaur Island down a little bit and makes it a two-player only game. Instead of having your own personal player board where you're building out your park, it's all cards mm -hmm. for that section of the game. And you're doing pretty much all of the same things, yeah, I think but you, pared down a little bit. Yeah, the, the big difference is some mechanics to make it more effective for two player and it just lowers the board presence so there's less components. Mm -hmm. Takes you up know, less table your tableau space. tableau in front of you is a bit smaller. <clears throat> but do you want to know what the biggest difference is and probably the worst one? No dino meeples. I don't know. Here's my issue with Dualosaur and I remember saying this after we played it. I would just have rather played normal Dino Island mm -hmm. at two player. I think this is a perfect game if you don't like big setup because Dino Island is a big setup. Yes. But if you don't mind that, just play Dino Island at two player. Yeah. So I, I we're not going to go too much into it because really it does play very, very similar to Dino Island, which mm -hmm. we just explained. The biggest thing for me is that it's not like no setup. There is still like you have to put out mm -hmm. the DNA boards and you have to put out the specialist boards and you have to put out all the cards and you have to put out all of these things. It's more setup than a lot of board games still, but not nearly as much setup as Dino Island. Yeah, I guess the trade-off is like, is it so much setup that it's like, just do a little bit more and go that's, play Dino Island? That's exactly what my point was going to be. I would rather just commit the extra two minutes to mm -hmm. set up the full game of Dino, Dino Island and play it. And like the beauty of Dino Island is that you can pick the length of your game. You could play a short, a medium, or a long game. So you don't have to commit to like an hour plus game. Mm -hmm. You can play a short game. The only thing I would say is I guess Dulasaur and Summonses would be better to pull out if space was limited. But I still feel like Dulasaur took up. It still took up space. It's not something you can pull out at like a airport. God, no. You know what I mean? Now, the game itself is still fun. It's just if I ever had to choose. I mean, I think it says a lot saying that we own all the other games except for this one. Yeah. Bottom of the pack for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because we play two-player only, mm -hmm. primary. So Yeah, that, that, is, that <laughs> is an anomaly for sure. Yeah. Okay, so that is Dulasaur Island. And then at the next step, we got both Dinosaur Island, Rar and Wright, and Dinosaur World. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Dinosaur Island, Rar and Wright first. What's it called? Dinosaur Island? Roar and Right. Roar and Right. That's Can right, Jeff. Up? I also will say we haven't played any of the expansions for any of these no. games. We haven't yeah, played like point. the Totally Liquid for Dinosaur Island. I personally feel like adding even more to these games, which are already pretty large. Yeah, I think a lot. I think for people that are super, super into these games, yeah, that makes sense. But mm -hmm. So Dinosaur Island Roar and Right is... The Rar and Wright, the Roll and Wright version of Dinosaur Island. Mm -hmm. You're doing many of the same things, but instead of doing them over a big sprawling board, you're doing it all on your Roll and Wright sheets. Mm -hmm. You get to roll those chonky dice, which is one of the best parts of Dinosaur Island. Yeah, they all <laughs> come with beautiful, big, the, like, chonky dice. amber yep. dice. From the symbols on the dice, you're going to get to do a variety of actions, which all relate very similarly back to Dinosaur Island. So you're collecting DNA. To do what? Make dinosaurs. That's I right, was trying Jeffrey. to think of the right word. I didn't want to say make dinosaurs. I didn't want to say generate. Create dinosaurs? Create. Yeah, create's a good one. You're also managing the security mm -hmm. of your park. You're also hiring different specialists. You're collecting money. And, of course, most importantly, you're actually building out your park, right? You're drawing it out, different shapes and different types of things. So when you build out your park on your sheet, this is the first one, if I remember correctly, that actually introduces a mechanic where people have to actually walk or traverse through your park. Mm -hmm. In the past, you would kind of just place visitors into pens and paddocks and stuff to see the dinosaurs. This is the first one where <clears> you actually <throat> have to draw out paths, walking paths and that sort of thing between your attractions so that people can experience your park and then exit. Mm -hmm. And each exit comes with like a bonus or like victory points or whatever. But interestingly enough, you can only do one path. It's like one each tour. Time. Yeah. Yeah. So each path has to be different. And this was the first time that that was introduced, which I think is more like the park experience. I really like Roar and Wright. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in a difficult category for us because there's some really good, heavier, mid to heavy weight rolling rights. 
but we really, really enjoyed it. When I remember when I played this, I was like, I don't know if I need to play Dino Island again. That was before we played Dino World. So that's Dinosaur Island Rar and Write. It is, I would say, definitely mid to heavy weight roll and write. There is a lot going on. The rule book for me, it took me a little while to kind of wrap mm -hmm. my head around it. And when Jeff and I played, we were just like, let's just go through everything step by step. I found that really helpful. Yeah. And then once we went through it like two or three times, we kind of got into the groove and we're like, oh, okay, this is all clicking. Now, last but not least has come, I almost said Jurassic World, Dinosaur World, which is the sequel of Dinosaur Island. So kind of just like the Jurassic Park movies, you have your little park and then suddenly you have Jurassic World. Boom, huge. And this game is huge. So this game, once again, very similar to Dino Island, but it basically just kind of like blows it up. So instead of having your own little personal dino pen or park tableau, you are building out your park using different hexagonal, hexagonal, hexagonal? Hexagon shaped tiles. Hexagon. <laughs> and you are doing that by once again, adding attractions, adding merchandise shops, adding dinosaur paddocks and pens. And then one of the really cool features of this game that you will see a little bit in Dinosaur Island Rar and Write mm -hmm. is the, the tours. So there's little jeeples and they're actually gonna be taking the guests on jeeple tours throughout your park. Mm -hmm. And same kind of idea, you can't take the same path twice. Your guests can't visit the same attraction twice. They can, but they are less interested in it. You right. get less, uh, I can't remember if it's excitement points or whatever, right. you get less. If you go to the same one, they're like, eh, I've seen this before. Yeah, you stupid T-Rex on jet skis, I've already seen this. Yeah. That's dumb. Speaking of which, there's T-Rex on jet skis. Mm -hmm. That is like one of the pinnacle tiles that you want to get. I got it. Jeff got it. Not happy. Now, that is kind of like the biggest difference of this game, I would say, is I think the tile is placement the fully, and the jeeple tour. Yeah, this is the fully fleshed out version. This is the dino island with the dinos and the DNA and creating dinos. And mm -hmm. the dinosaur roar and write where they started to introduce the park exploration with the meeples and the jeeples and stuff. Mm -hmm. This is like the final form. This is right. the full theme park. I'm building a theme park. I'm building dinosaurs experience. But in this one also, kind of like with the specialist things, but you have different colored meeples yeah. that you are going to be working with. And each of those meeples allow you to do different things. So on your turn, you're like spending these different meeples to do different actions. The one thing with this game, I really like Dino World. I love it. It is, it is the pinnacle dino game for people that like Jurassic Park, that like that theme. This is the pinnacle game. The difficulty for this game is how much friggin' space it takes. Oh my gosh. It takes so much space on the table. You've heard us talk about it before, mm -hmm. and we are not exaggerating. We are not. We, you know us. We have a three by exaggerate. five insert in this table, and we could only fit a two player game yeah. inside. And like just, it just And it fits. just fit. Yeah. You're building a big sprawling park in front of you, and then there's many, many things that you can grab from the center. It just, the table presence is huge. Yes. Very, very large. Very, very, very large. But ultimately, for me, this is the one that I always want to play. Yeah, like this is for the people. We didn't really mention who Dinosaur Roar and Write was for. Yeah. I think Dinosaur Roar and Write is for the people that don't have a ton of table presence but want... Table space, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, table space but want that dino experience. I think you're going to get it from Roar and Write. Mm -hmm. Dinosaur World is for people that have four players with a big table that want a really freaking fun dino experience. Mm -hmm. Yep. And don't care about setup and don't care about space or have all of that lined up. Nothing compares to it. I would say that if you had the choice of the four games, our suggestions or our recommendations, number one, you should try at least one of these games yeah. for sure. If you yeah. have the opportunity. Do you need to own all four? No. No. You don't. Definitely and not. I would say if we weren't collectors, I would probably only own Dino World and Dinosaur Island Rar and Right. Yeah, agreed. I think at this point, as much as I love Dinosaur Island, the original, I don't think that I'm going to go back. back We've talked it. about gifting it many We've times. We've talked about it, but we'll not Jamie do that. Jamie will not let me. I would actually like to play them back to back. I'd like to play Dinosaur Island, 
and then right after play Dinosaur World and just really get like that good comparison. But I would say if you are kind of back and forth between the two, I would go with Dinosaur World over Dinosaur Island. They both take a lot of space. So yes. that variable is kind of thrown out the window. Get but Dino it. World does take more space that is than true. Dino Island. That is you need true. You need a need. big table to play Dino World. Yes. Like that is not a thing that you can do without. If you want to watch us kind of play Dinosaur World a little bit, we did play it in one of our board game weekends. And I will link that video below so you can kind of get a visual of and how much space And keep in mind that takes. table is a conference room table. Conference room table. We took and up every took single every inch, inch of it. <laughs> now, if you are just wanting to get introduced into the series, or like Jeff said, you don't have a ton of table space. Dinosaur Island Rar and Write is an excellent way to kind of It's a jump very, in. and if you just... If you enjoy uh, Roll and Rights. Roll and Rights. It's very good. Yeah. It's a very, very good game. Yeah. For us, I would say Dulosaur Island, we probably can pass on that one. That's, yeah. It, which is weird because, again, we really like two-player games, but that yeah. one just didn't hit for us. Just didn't hit for us. Yeah. That's for sure. So that is a little bit about some of these games. We I just, like talking about these. Yeah, I like talking about these games, too. And I just, I think it's really interesting when a publisher releases a bunch of games in the same series and honestly I don't know if they're gonna come out with another one but I'm like just waiting for it because I love dinosaur games. Dinosaur world in space. In space. I just think these games are all amazing. I love them. I love the theme. They're very thematic like the fact that you're... Like, Dino world is especially thematic. It's super thematic so if you want a game where you can totally immerse yourself into the theme I'd highly recommend you try it. I think it in dinosaur ways. world too like I, I don't mean to keep hopping on this but if you like those old video games like roller coaster tycoon mm -hmm. or like those zoo builders like those pc games that um i don't know if they're popular now but were somewhat popular when i was a kid yep dino world is one that kind of scratches that itch a bit anyways i think that's everything that we have today for our dinosaur chat let us know down below what you think of these games have you tried one of them have you tried multiple have you tried all of them i'd love to know which one is your favorite mm -hmm. and if you're interested in buying board games like any of the dinosaur island world etc you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store mm -hmm. and for us that is the boardroom game cafe yes it is hey look at that it's not even a board game not a board brew. games and brew but i'm having coffee because exactly. it's morning and i'm tired it's morning and i'm tired that's why i'm wearing my sleepy stitch shirt that's all we have thank you so much for watching if you like what you see please subscribe we hope to see you again soon and now we say goodbye goodbye later it is Rawr. happy dinosauring no wait those are all different those are all different yeah that that's that no i don't think so keep going yeah it's no see those are all different i don't think it was those in the og game it's that one but go back maybe it was a stegosaurus all these people got fancy upgrades it's those ones it's those ones it was stegas was it i'm nearly positive no that's a triceratops i don't i actually have no idea now. me neither There's too many photos of the non-version that we have People all got fancy upgrades. Maybe ours just didn't come with it. Is it that one? No, I have it here. No, I think it's in storage. I think. Well, Cosmic Frog just all came on un un unchained. No, I haven't seen it here. It's you not here. It? No, it's not here. Is Dino World here? No. It's not. No. It's craziness. Okay.